In this episode, we're going to look at how to design a typography component using textiles and recipes in Panda CSS. If you use design tools like Figma or Sketch, textiles should sound pretty familiar. Let's dive right in. We'll start out by defining textiles in the Panda config. Even a textile called headline one, to define the value of this textile, you pass in a description that describes what the textile is for, and also a value which is pretty much the collection of styles for that textile. So here we're setting the font size to 5rem, line height to 1.2em, and letter spacing to those values. To make this much better, we'll define headline 2 and headline 3 styles. Now let's jump right in to see how we can use this in our application. Next, we'll define a recipe for our typography component. We'll start out by defining the base styles, setting its color to gray.800. Next, we'll define the variants for the typography. The first variant we'll consider is level, which just means what heading level or what level the text is. One option is H1. So H1 would map to a textile of headline 1. Remember, headline 1 is a textile we defined in our Panda config, and we're now reusing that in this level H1. We map the H2 and the H3 styles correspondingly to headline 2 and headline 3. Another cool feature we can use in Panda CSS is Boolean variants. Now, in this case, we define a bold variant and say when the value is set to true, we want to apply font weight bold. In a similar fashion, you can do the same for Itlik. So when we pass Itlik true to this recipe, we want to map that to font style Itlik. And on the line as well, we can say when on the line is set to true, we want to apply text decoration on the line. With our typography recipe defined, let's go ahead to apply this onto the H1, H2, and H3 element. In the H1 element, we pass in the class name of typography recipe, calling it the level H1. Now, when we do this, the level H1 recipe variant will be applied to that element. For the H2 element, we'd also pass in the typography level calling out the level H2. Now, this would apply the textiles of the H2 we already defined earlier. Now, in the H3, we do something a little bit different, applying in the level H3 and also passing on the line true. At the moment we do this, we can instantly see that the H3 heading has the underlying text decoration applied to it. We can test out the other variants by passing in bold true and the H2, and we can see that the H2 heading is bold. And we can also pass in itlik true to the H1 to see it being in itlik format. Now, that's awesome. The next level is we'll take this recipe and convert this to a component that can be reused across your application. I've gone ahead to create a typography.tsx file, putting the typography recipe here and importing it directly into the app to make this much cleaner. To define the typography component, we'll start out by defining a type called typography props and a component called typography, exporting that to be used in the application. To define the typography props, we'll start by importing the recipe variant props type from Panda CSS. Next, we would infer the variants of the typography recipe by passing in the variants and putting in the type argument type of typography recipe. Now, if we put our cursor over this, we can instantly get a preview of the variants of that typography recipe, such as level, bold, which can be boolean, itlik, and underline. Next, we'll bring in some generic HTML attribute type and also a as prop that we can use to change the underlying element to any of these h1 through h6, p, or span. Now you can extend this list to include as many elements as you want to support in your component. First thing we're going to do is to invoke a method on the recipe called split variant props. Now this function is used to separate out props that belong to the variant of the recipe and other generic properties on that component. Splitting out the variant props gives us a tuple of the variant props and the rest of the props. For now, we call this local props. In the local props, we would extract out the as, giving it an alias of component and setting its default value to the p tag, which means every time this component is rendered, it's always going to use a p tag, but you can always override that with an h1, h2, h3, and so on. The last thing we'll do is to render the component, passing in the class name that invokes the typography recipe and putting in the variant props. 
At the end, we'll spread the rest props. Now let's see how this works when it's used in the application. I'll start by importing the typography component and rendering an instance of that component. Now here you see we are setting the level to H1, which means it's going to use the style of an H1 and also setting the element to H4. Of course, this is not required, so we can get rid of this right now. As you can see, we get the same styles. But if we inspect the DOM of this component, we see that it renders a P tag because we set the default value to a P tag. Now let's go ahead to replace all the previous instances of the typography recipe call with the actual typography components. Now this recipe has an itlik true applied to it. So I'll pass in here itlik. And there you go, the component renders in the hitlick version. And we can get rid of this one. Next, we see we have an h2 tag. So I'll create a new copy of the typography component, passing in the level of h2 and setting the bold prop. Now we can see it also applies in the h2 styles. We can then change this text back to h2. So it actually looks like so. Now the last thing we can do is to replace the h3 one with the underline set to true. So I create a new copy of this, set the levels to h3, and also pass in underline. The there you go. Then now I can finally get rid of all usages of this recipe calls and only use the typography component everywhere in my code base. As we saw earlier, we can change this to an h3 as well. Now to make this all match the respective DOM nodes, so let's say we want to make this render on H1, we can always come here to the component, pass in the as prop and set that to H1, and do the same across all components as well. So I come here and say as H2, and then finally as H3 on the component. So that way you separate out the semantic DOM element that's rendered and the styles or the text styles rendered for that component. To make this component feature complete, we'll start out by destructuring out the class name from the local props. Then we'll create a new version of the class name that concatenates the typography recipe class name with whatever class name is passed into the component. And then finally, we can get rid of the old version of that component. Panda exposes a CX function that is pretty much just a string concatenation for class names. And you can import that from the style system CSS. And there you have it. We have a pretty complete typography component we can use across our application.